I'm a professor of biochemistry at the University of Wisconsin in Madison, Wisconsin. I'm a vitamin D and multiple sclerosis researcher. I started this type of work about between 15 and 20 years ago now. And right now, we are in the middle of research into the mechanisms that vitamin D is using in the brain to eliminate the T cells that are causing demyelinating disease. So we'd like to understand in detail how vitamin D is metabolized in the central nervous system, how the hormone, vitamin D hormone is produced, where does it go, and what does it do that lets a person avoid new demyelinating lesions? That's our current focus. I am mainly doing studies in the animal model of multiple sclerosis, such as the ones I just told you about. But in addition to that, I work with a large group of people from around the world. We have formed a task force. And we're looking at the evidence that connects vitamin D with multiple sclerosis with an eye out for an opportunity to prevent the disease. So this is our dream. We think we understand enough about vitamin D and its relationship to MS to predict that some cases might be preventable. So we would like to work in countries where they have a very large burden of MS to see if we can prevent some of those cases and reduce the burden. So that's a very exciting opportunity. I have colleagues all over the world that are working together to achieve that. Studies have looked at vitamin D levels and the risk of having a relapse. And all over the world we're finding exactly the same relationship. The higher vitamin D level, the lower is the risk of a relapse. And, on the other hand, the lower your vitamin D level, the higher the risk of a relapse. Now that's a correlation. What we need to know next, and we just have a few studies now, is what happens if we give someone vitamin D to raise their vitamin D level, does that prevent relapses? And the answer coming out so far is yes, it appears to vitamin D3. And that was the best data we have was published this year from Finland. Patients taking vitamin D3 as a supplement had fewer new lesions, less progression, and a little bit better ambulation in just a one-year study. So we are encouraged by that information to broaden these studies to include more people, maybe longer periods of time, and more questions about the particular disabilities. For instance, we'd like to know about cognition, and we'd like to know about uh, the progression forms of MS, and those questions haven't been asked yet. Every neurologist I know is beginning to test their patients to see what their vitamin D levels are. And if those levels are low, they're taking steps to bring them up. And they are also, many of them, recommending to MS patients that their families do the same thing. Because we know having a family member with MS increases your risk of MS. There is a genetic component. So a lot of families are taking a family approach. And it's being encouraged by the neurologists I know. Now, not all neurologists are yet informed about the vitamin D data that we have. And so that's a challenge that our global task force is taking on. We are now writing a report of our meeting to try and assemble all the information in one place where it's more useful to the neurological community. We have a lot of plans. One of the questions we need to understand is when does vitamin D influence MS risk? Because if you're going to try to prevent the disease, you have to understand 
what period of time is that window of opportunity? And is there a point of no return? So, for example, do we need to give vitamin D to pregnant women? Do we need to give vitamin D to infants and toddlers? Is it okay to wait until they're 12? Not, we don't know any of that. So we are trying to model those questions in our animal work where we can get a, an answer clearly and quickly and bring that to the task force as information to use in designing our prevention studies. So uh, another type of study that we're doing is we are looking for a remedy for the progressive forms of MS. We think that vitamin D might not be as effective in those forms of MS, but there might be a way to use the vitamin D hormone itself. So we've done experiments along those lines. We hope to finish them up soon and make them available again to the neurological community to consider for use in people.